Good morning, everyone, once again, and welcome to the panel on tokenized money and um, tokenized assets in the unified ledger. In June 2023, the Bank for International Settlement actually published a blueprint for a new type of financial market infrastructure that would combine um, the benefits of tokenization by bringing central bank money, tokenized deposits, and tokenized assets into an integrated infrastructure. I think we all believe that's a strong vision, but the question remains, how can we actually evolve into such an integrated market infrastructure? What type of regulation, what type of governance, and technology circumstances do we need in order to have such an infrastructure evolving for tokenized assets and really help us to get into widespread adoption on the asset and money side, right? And it's a great pleasure to me to discuss those important questions with a high-ranked panel of specialists from the field, and maybe you can introduce yourself quickly with name and organization, and then we jump into the topic. Pasak. Thank you very much. Uh, Bashak Toprak, uh, I'm with uh, Onyx by JP Morgan. I head up the um, EMEA uh, for coin systems. Uh, Onyx is a blockchain uh, platform, which I'll touch on to give some examples later on. Thomas. Hello, good morning. My name is Thomas Wisbach from Deutsche Börse. Uh, I'm part of an of a, of a interesting team which is called New Digital Markets. Since five years, we are exploring into blockchain and DLT already longer, but since five years in this team and have a very exciting project which is called D7. So, Ivica Aracic is my name, so I'm the CTO of um, Swayat, uh, and the goal of Swayat is to provide uh, everything that regulated entities need to scale digital asset cases. Um, and uh, in, in an environment that, um, let's say, is regulatory compliant, as I said, but also supports uh, collaborative competition, which is one of the keys uh, which we are considering as being one of the keys for uh, coming to something like unified ledger. Jan, you want to continue? Yes, good morning, uh, everybody. My name is Jan Seistens. I'm heading the Digital Finance Unit in the European Commission, DG Fisma. And Julian. I have an sorry for not being with us today. So I'm um, very close. I'm heading the uh, digital asset optimization platform at BNP Paribas, CIB, and that's asset fund. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bajak. Maybe we can kick it off. As Ima head of Coin Systems at Onyx, um, you are overlooking the money side at, at Onyx. From your point of view, what are the critical components of a unified ledger on the money and asset side? And what have you learned uh, from, your, from your journey at Onyx so far? Sure. Um, I think, as you mentioned earlier, uh, unified ledger concept is a is a great inspiration, and uh, it helps us to move towards that that aim. We we all know it will take us some time to get there, but there are things we can already do, uh, which are kind of building blocks. Um, and I think from a from an Onyx perspective, what we have focused on is not just to prove concepts. Um, and run experiments, which are very important as well, right? Uh, but we focused on how can we commercialize um, some of these concepts. Um, and I think that's a, that's a great starting point. And I think, you know, these um, commercial products that are out there, you know, including what we have, gives us confidence to, to move forward. Um, so from an Onyx perspective, we've, um, uh, what we have, which is, you know, interesting for this topic is where we have the asset and the cash uh, on the same chain. Uh, we run intraday repo platform, you know, which processes billions of dollars. Um, and we have the tokenized collateral as well as the, the cash on chain, which helps with the atomic settlement. Uh, so that's the kind of the dream of the unified ledger, of course, with, with an expanded uh, scope. Uh, but I think we were able to show that that is possible, that adds value, that it, there is a business case, and it can be scaled. Great. I think you made an important point uh, outlining it's always the cash and the asset lag, right, that needs to be served in an integrated fashion. Jan, maybe handing over to you. Regulation sets the foundation for widespread adoption of distributed ledger technology in the financial market. Um, 
We have seen MICA, we have seen the DLT pilot regime. From your point of view, are we all set from a regulatory point of view for widespread adoption of tokenization within the EU? Yeah, that, that's of course a big and broad question because uh, uh, given that you can tokenize uh, potentially a lot of uh, different assets, uh, I think uh, one needs to go a bit more into depth and detail on each of them then to look what the kind of regulatory situation is. But overall, I would say that let's say where we see, where we have seen issues definitely from the European, let's say, uh, regulatory lens, I think today we have addressed them. You did mention the DAT pilot, actually, which uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, concerns indeed uh, tokenized financial instrument and the related market infrastructures, uh, where indeed possibly some, I mean, based on our stakeholders' feedbacks, uh, there were some some obstacles and some some regulatory challenges. We have indeed uh, addressed them in the in the legislation, which is now in place already since uh, last year. Um, so I think uh, on that side, in a way, that's probably a bit more than the, the asset and the settlement side. I think we are we are all clear. I think on the on the cash lag side, of course, uh, uh, there are different possibilities, uh, and then indeed I think the public money side is is something which is a bit out of our realm. But the ECB is also active on this, as you know, um, uh, to the extent indeed that uh, let's say private commercial bank money or other solutions would actually be uh, let's say uh, used. Uh, we have also uh, indeed with the DLT pilot and uh, with uh, the Mika regulation, which it also has a framework indeed for certain stable kind, uh, let's say, um, uh, solutions we have, I think, again, created a clear framework and indeed uh, uh, deposits, which, uh, uh, let's say, and uh, commercial bank money, which is, of course, the other possibility uh, is is kind of uh, part and parcel of the existing framework. So, indeed, we, are, we have the impression that all from the regulatory side, let's say, there are no fundamental obstacles. Of course, any project will need to be discussed uh, in detail with supervisors, uh, but that's, I think, standard, uh, standard practice and I think the supervisors have all an open door for that. Uh, so, we hear about a lot of interesting and constructive discussions and uh, yeah it's now really indeed for the market i would say to uh, to get this going thomas it seems the foundation for token based financial market infrastructures are set you had deutsche börse one of the biggest financial market infrastructure providers within europe from your point of view what what is your role and contribution as deutsche börse to a digital capital market within europe and um, uh, what is tokenization? Uh, what what role does it play in your in your strategic plans and considerations? Uh, thank you for the question. How much time do I have? <laughs> we we want to make it start short. with short answers make and then short. go more into short. a wider discussion. We heard about the the unified ledger, and I think this was the intro to 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 uh, our panel. And uh, I think that's a nice concept, um, but we're not there. So, in other words, it will take time and the question is how do we get there so we, we always have people who are first to start something and then something is out and then you start to harmonize later on I think this is a natural and it's a given thing you will not change that um, we from Deutsche Börse have been out there for a while already and we, we, we looked at the technology and, and, and looked what what will it change but at the end of the day what we find out and we just heard from, from Mark Hennigus in the, in the previous session uh, that there is new roles right and I think this is what we actively looked at um, and this is how we came, we came to the concept of what we call D7 so we want to really digitize we want to tokenize the security from its inception from its birth if you like therefore we work um, mainly with the issuers currently uh, to to find ways how we we get uh, the data from them in a in a way that we can create out of that data uh, what we call the uh, the mp3 of the security so a digital representation of the security which then can be shared with the community i think this is the source to all the solutions and we as Deutsche Börse, as infrastructure provider, stand ready to, to build this infrastructure for the future operation of financial markets with digital assets. I think that's that's the main story here. We are already, we have built parts already, it's out there, so parts can be tested and can be worked with even in in production uh, for the central register in, in, in Germany uh, under the e-securities law. We are uh, alive since a while already and we are working as well on, on uh, decentral registers where we will be bringing something to the market next year. Great. Um, 
Ivica, we just learned that the cash lag is kind of really critical to get into mass adoption of tokenized financial instruments. Um, we have some new regulation for stable coins within the Mika, but I guess we all agree that uh, uh, settlement and central bank money is kind of key for institutional adoption and uh, for for many use cases within the uh, within the financial service industry. You, as CTO from Swire, just recently joined the market contact group of the ECB on wholesale CBDC. What what are your plans with Swire to also yeah, enable the cash lag and really work towards um, powerful tokenization market infrastructures? Um, yeah, good questions. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, so we, we are, um, we did not recently join, but uh, we are uh, participating already since the inception of, of the group, so um, last year. So, and we also have um, uh, proposed, um, let's say, own solution, yeah, how, how this also could be done, but yeah, currently we're focusing on that, what uh, ECB is proposing. But come, going one step back, yeah, so um, that we need a payment lag yeah, on, 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 on chain, so to say. Yeah, so, I mean, we do not need to discuss about this. Yeah, if you come from capital market treasury cases, then of course you want to have something like delivery versus delivery or delivery versus payment. Yeah. And uh, you typically do not do that with stable coins or, or commercial bank money, but you want for, uh, let's say, insolvency reasons or, or risks yeah, or counterpart risks, you want to do it in central bank money. So, and then of course, if we would have something like unified ledger, that would be the perfect situation, but as uh, uh, my colleagues here said already, so it's some sort of holy grail that kind of gives us some sort of a compass yeah, to, to go to the right direction, but it's very difficult to reach yeah, because you, you, it is really difficult to bring overnight all participants together uh, into something like unified ledger. And especially from the perspective of central banks, it's also difficult to go into dependency uh, with something which is not clearly established in the market, right? <clears throat> and for that reason, the best we can reach, I would say the next years is like to try to consolidate the market uh, to platforms that, uh, that are uh, supporting collaborative competition in the sense that people can share everything which is not contributing to competitive differentiation, yeah? and then, but still have their sovereignty uh, maintained and then compete at the application level, right? And, um, and when we have that, when we accept this fact that we have different uh, ledgers, right, and we have to think about interoperability, right? And when we have to think about the interoperability, then we can also ask the question, why do we necessarily need to issue some sort of CBDC token? Why not just connect centralized real-time gross settlement system ledger, right, with uh, the different market DLTs that we have? And that's exactly the approach uh, that ECB is now trying to um, uh, test or do experiments in trials. And, and, um, and uh, from my perspective, I think that is exactly the right way to go because these are, um, let's say, the intermediate steps on the way to unified ledger. Yeah? And, um, and, and uh, the reason why we're participating is, of course, because this is one of important puzzle pieces to bring everything together so that institutions can scale digital asset cases, right? Great. Julien, um, you at uh, BNP Paribas uh, CIB, you are running Asset Foundry, the tokenization platform of BNP. From your point of view and also from the experience of actual real-life uh, issuances, are we already on the way to widespread adoption of tokenization? And is like the, yeah, this bold concept of a unified ledger actually really uh, yeah, uh, has, a, uh, has a clear road to, to, to realization and really, uh, really um, becoming a new foundation for financial market infrastructure and financial market operations. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jens. Uh, indeed, so we're very hands-on and, and pragmatic, and we're looking at this topic seriously by building things to understand the impact. So typically, we've done this uh, issuance for one of our clients last year uh, to do renewable project finance on, on public Ethereum to assess the benefits and the opportunities, as well as the impact. But if I step back, blockchain is a shared ledger within the network. And I think that's the, and it totally relates to the topic today. 
uh, we shouldn't forget the within network element. And if you look at uh, this digital asset space, there are two uh, two fields. The digitalization is one. If you have digital asset with smart contracts and you automate that on a private network, for instance, that brings efficiency, which is great. The tokenization is the next step, is how you distribute the value within the network so it can move across an ecosystem. Um, I think we're still overall in the dig digitalization space. Uh, we're moving to the tokenization space, and this discussion is typically a, a symptom of that. As soon as you start to talk about the network itself and how you distribute this value. And to be honest, uh, I'm not sure it's it's a technology play. It's an ecosystem play. It's an unified ecosystem, rather a uh, unified technology. And then the other point is, which objects? Because if you look at capital markets today, uh, they're fairly efficient. I mean, if you look at listed bonds, etc., maybe we can reap 10% of benefits, but we're talking about changing the infrastructure here. I mean, it's not, it's not a small job. It's huge. So the way we look at it is, of course, we're looking at this 10% improvement related to digitalization, but we're also looking at opportunities. We can bring 10x. Are there underserved market? Tokenization brings new capabilities. That's typically what we've been looking at with project finance, a small object. Or transparency of data, ESG data in the token directly from the issuance. And I think the ecosystem also uh, uh, can work on this 10x approach to fully understand the impact on tokenization, which would probably lead more and more to a unified ecosystem and possibly unified ledger or a few ledgers out there which, which will connect or be interoperable, but not zillions of ledger, otherwise it won't fly. Yeah, I, I really like that term of a unified ecosystem, actually. Uh, I, I guess a unified ledger always has the bias of believing there's one network kind of overtaking all types of assets and uh, all types of uh, tokenization cases. I think this is a rather unrealistic perspective. But the question remains, if we talk about a unified ecosystem, what what are the missing building blocks and how can we really get into such an unified ecosystem, what can be a road um, to, to, to adoption here, really? Uh, we have heard from Julienne it's about moving from digitalization to really uh, yeah, realizing all capabilities of tokenization, but uh, how, how can we also, as a capital market community, kind of make those, those steps? I would say... Um, there is something which everybody needs to decide for itself or every company. This is the topic of giving away control at the end of the day. I think we're all living in a world where I own my own databases, I run my own systems, I may have service partners, but I need to have control. Firstly, I maybe want to do this, but secondly as well, I'm forced to do it by regulation, for instance. And I think we all come to a situation where we now find in this new world of, 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 of DLT and blockchain, there is less control I have. And people need to think about that topic before they, they go there. And, and if we want to really achieve something and do something differently, we have to consider this carefully. How much control do I want to give do, or can I give away? That's, I think, an important aspect. Yeah, I, I, I love that statement, Thomas. Uh, and I think it goes to the point of, you know, there's a certain way we do things today. When we're moving to this new technology, do we copy paste what we're doing? Or <laughs> do we think about different ways of doing things? Uh, and I think control and regulations go hand in hand, right? Uh, we want to control because that's, you know, that's what the regulation says, right? But this technology brings new ways of doing things. Um, and I think that's the part where, you know, we need to... Um, uh, provide more examples of what can be done. So there's a, there's a great project that's kind of kicked off in, in, in Singapore with BIS Innovation Hub, Project Mandala, and they are looking at on-chain regulatory compliance. Um, so what does that mean? 
when you move funds cross-border from one country to the other and you're using um, commercial bank money, deposit tokens, how can you leverage some, some of the on-chain protocols that are possible to implement? So right now, for example, each bank is uh, responsible for its own sanction screening, right? Uh, but if you have capabilities on-chain that do screening, then you know, parties don't do, need to do duplicate screening. You can attach a proof of screening, right? So this is a fundamentally different way of doing cross-border transfers. And it's, it is possible by using this, you know, composability um, of, you know, of using on-chain protocols. Uh, and I think there is, you know, a couple of things um, that needs to come together. And there's a great explanation of... Um, a paper um, by the MAS earlier this year where they looked at what are the components that need to come together for interoperable networks, that's, that's what they call, which is, you know, kind of synonymous with unified ledgers. Uh, so it starts with access, access layer, so you have ways of accessing the network. And then you have assets on the network, right? Um, and then you have services, which are various smart con contracts that you know that are composable with with the assets and then you you have the platform itself so those kind of four layers of of services and components come together to 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 bring the interoperable uh, network uh. if i may um, add another perspective so on 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 the on the aspect of losing control so at Swiat, we see it actually the other way around. Yeah? So with blockchain technology, you now have a way to collaborate in something which feels like a centralized data and process model. So all these efficiency that we're always talking about, uh, uh, you are uh, um, kind of reducing the value chain, you are taking out uh, reconciliation process and so on and so on and so on. But then at the same time, you still can maintain sovereignty over your data and, uh, let's say, over, over your processes and over your, um, uh, your, your uh, customers, so to say. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 that's, and that, when I try to explain blockchain, I do not come from the perspective of tokenization and things like that, but I rather come from the perspective of having a new architectural paradigm for designing such uh, environments where you can do uh, collaborative competition, right? And then, uh, Jens, what you asked, uh, uh, so what do we need to kind of leverage all, all these things? Yeah? So um, I think people realize it's not about just uh, taking a little bit of technology, packaging it and throwing over the fence. Yeah? So you have to, to clarify uh, um, legal parts, yeah? especially who's responsible for what and which risks are associated with this infrastructure. If you want to scale it, there is another BIS paper on this part, right? And people, um, I think Michael, uh, Michael asked this question, yeah, so uh, cu cultural change. People have to come out of a collaboration paradox, right? So because everybody has a feeling if we collaborate, it will be better, but the collaboration currently in the market is not good enough. Yeah, so uh, more consolidation is actually needed. Yeah. And I think these parts, when they come together, right, then we will come a step closer to, to something like unified ledger, right? If I can maybe also come in on the, let's say, regulatory part of this in a way. Actually, I want to maybe push back a bit on this. I don't think that the supervisors or the regulators, they are asking indeed firms to, to keep control in a way. Actually, what supervisors and regulators want, they want to have that outcomes are indeed, supervisory outcomes are indeed, uh, let's say, the right ones that we ensure uh, market integrity and, uh, and uh, that we protect financial stability. Uh, I mean, supervisors are quite willing to look also at, uh, let's say, different ways of uh, of doing this. And uh, I think uh, you mentioned indeed uh, the projects in Singapore. I think uh, we have in Europe here also a project together with the uh, from the Commission and the European supervisory authorities on what we call embedded supervision in a way, which also exactly looks indeed at uh, the way of using also public networks and the information which is available there indeed to to ensure market integrity and to make sure indeed uh, that monitoring is, is, is possible. So I think we are looking at this. I think, of course, what we cannot have a situation where basically in the end then by kind of um, uh, by, by decentralizing certain uh, functions in a way, you overall have a lower level of, uh, of, of safety, of protection. But I think that's not necessarily the case. Um, but if, if there are different solutions, I mean, I think the regulator is quite open. And, and let me maybe also give another example on this. 
Uh, I mean, cloud usage, I think, is not uh, anymore a, a new thing. But uh, let's say, of course, it's also linked to a certain level of losing control. So, I mean, uh, then when we saw at the same time, however, that overall this may even increase the resilience and the uh, innovation of the system. Uh, indeed, we introduced in, in our Dora legislation, we induced in a supervisory oversight over cloud service or, let's say, tech, tech providers, basically. So uh, we are quite willing to look, as in another example, how we are willing to look at different tools actually to achieve the same objectives. What matters are the outcomes. It's not uh, an individual firm's uh, uh, control in a way. But I think that's a conversation also indeed which which needs to be had because of course uh, we need to, together with the market participants, we need to look at in each individual situation and each individual case basically and to see well how can actually the, the supervisory or regulatory outcomes actually be, be achieved. And if I may, and I totally agree with all that, uh, from, from the experience, uh, all this, I spend more time with lawyers than technicians, okay? <laughs> a blockchain topic uh, or tokenization or whatever is really about regulatory space, le uh, legal landscape, especially a fragmented regulatory landscape, which is which is okay. Um, and paradoxically, um, we talked about control. Blockchain gives a huge amount of control over what we're doing. I mean, look at delivery versus payment atomically uh, on-chain or cross-chain. I mean, you, you don't have the counterparty risk anymore because you've got digital assets on both sides with smart contracts. You can permission because even on a public ledger, it's fine. The internet is public, but I've got a banking app on my phone, which is private. So I can have private permission tokens on a public ledger, which is what we've done. So you can control uh, who's getting that. You can whitelist, et cetera. So, uh, and compliance is our manu friends. Blockchain is great. It brings transparency end to end. So uh, it, it's all sort of paradox um, between the regulatory landscape. And of course, we have to do that. We have to have the business uh, continuity plan, which we, uh, we're working on, as well as making sure we have the, the control. And if I may, I think the, in the end game, tokenization will be a commodity. And the ecosystem uh, won't compete on that anymore. They we would compete on services on top of this token, which is kind of a super API. That's, that'll be the centerpiece of an ecosystem reconciling onto this uh, token and the data in the token, providing new services to the, to the clients. And eventually, and back to your question, of how can we, we can make it happen or where we are? We're moving from a non-linear world with lots of reconciliations all over the place with lots of actors to a linear world. There's one ledger, you know, shared within an ecosystem. And I think we're still in the phase where everybody, all actors from the issuer, I mean, some issuer, they've issued directly yeah, to investors without bank in, uh, in the middle. Some investors, they're looking at it's the, the banks, of course, the CSDs, the NTFs, you know, the, 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 the trading venue, the, the custodians as well. All these people, are trying to move into this linear world at the entry gate, which is normal. We're still in this phase of people testing all that. I think it'll be maybe a year or two before everybody realizes everybody's got his job, basically. Everybody's got his share of the cage and should think about the services instead of, of fighting onto the ability to tokenize, which is, again, it will be a community. Um, so I guess it'll, there'll be experimentations for a couple of years again to fully understand all that and each player in the value chain understand where the positioning should be. Maybe it should move. Maybe some player would move, would provide new services. But we should think about, you know, this uh, ledger as some sort of infrastructure and a commodity on which there's a token on which we can provide new services uh, on top. Great. I, I have to ask again, actually, because you have mentioned, I believe, so many important topics. Uh, I mean, there's it, it, it kind of becomes clear that a shared market infrastructure that relies on a, on, a, on a unified ledger or on shared ledgers is really a fundamental change to the way we operate financial market infrastructure and how we also organize transactions within on the cash and asset side. But the question really remains... Uh, how do we move into that infrastructure? I mean, at JP Morgan, I guess you have proven that within a private uh, kind of controlled environment, uh, we can already move into large-scale adoption. At Deutsche Börse, you have proven the same. But how do we really get into some level of uh, collaboration, giving up control, and kind of agreeing on joint market standards? Is it Do we need more regulation, more standardization, Les, what, what are your opinions here? How, how do we overcome this collaboration dilemma, in a sense? 
Yeah, I love the which I talked about <laughs> collaboration paradox. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, one one other example I would give, um, you know, beyond our private permissioned um, environment, we also uh, helped found um, uh, a platform, independent platform called Partior, and that's a shared ledger amongst banks. Um, and it started with commercial banks, right? So right now is a couple of banks um, uh, on this platform, um, and you know, hopefully it will grow. But the idea is, again, you know, right now we can only um, control what we can control, which is, you know, commercial bank money within banks. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a platform, a shared ledger for banks to have their basically digital nostrils, right? Uh, so that's a, that's a shared ledger environment that goes beyond our four walls and it helps our clients connect with clients of other banks uh, through this clearing and settlement. Uh, so, and, and the other idea we have is, uh, it starts with commercial bank, but it can be a place for um, central bank digital currency issuance as well. So. And I think, you know, some of the questions that are being raised in the industry is where do you keep the liquidity? Um, so, you know, do you have liquidity all in one place and then you have mechanisms to go and reach to move that liquidity? Or do you actually have money represented in multiple venues? Um, I think in the near term, money will need to be on multiple venues um, and the mechanisms that we have to move money around can help with you know fast movement of funds so to reduce the liquidity uh, fragmentation but that's kind of like one path that is sort of emerging um, and I think, you know, the, the work that ECB has launched around the wholesale CBDC and looking at different models of how central bank money can be reached to support market DLT platforms is a great initiative. I think we're moving beyond, like, you know, is there a business here to, towards talking more about, okay, what is the use case? Where would it help? And how can we achieve this? Um, and I think to Julian's point, I think we were speaking earlier, once we stop talking about tokenization, <laughs> I think we're going to be there. We, we will be talking more about the business uh, cases. Yeah, I think five years back, everybody was sitting at the same table. We were all in one room and we were working together how we can make use of the technology. So there was a lot of collaboration at that time. Uh, in the last couple of years, I would say everybody was going home and was trying out. So there was a bit of a separation. People were doing their individual things. They brought their own ledgers, their own ideas. I think it's now time to get back together to, to, to discuss again, to get to harmonization and standardization. This is the way how the market should do it. I think it's, it's up to the market to find a solution here. We have something else in security settlement which is called target to securities, which was not found by the market, or at least there was some political uh, stress to, to get it done. I think this time we should do better. So let's get together in, in the groups. In, is it on the asset side? Is it on the, on the payment side? I think we need to get this together at the end of the day by a solution of the market. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, just adding a few words because most things were said already. But um, what what I think is um, important is, um, I mean, we can drive a lot of inspiration from uh, public permissionless Ethereum. So if we talk about unified ledger, then from my perspective, that would be something which kind of gives a preview how it could look like. Yeah? So because we have an environment where people collaborate together based on, 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 on common standards and so on. But uh, this environment also has challenges for regulated entities which need more control, so to say, and also a way to do better risk analysis. It makes it difficult for them to go there and scale, right? And now we need to balance these things out, yeah, to have something, like Julian said, yeah, something which is uh, uh, infrastructure being some sort of commodity, and also the software on this infrastructure being some commodity, right? And we need to collaborate on that level to, to get it there, yeah. Yeah, great. Unfortunately, we are already running out of time, but uh, I guess first things first, thanks a lot to all of you. I think we have shed some really good light on what is what can be a road uh, of adoption or to adoption of uh, tokenized financial market infrastructure. And um, I believe 
the, the term of a unified ecosystem that really means that all of us are kind of rethinking our roles within financial markets, really see how standardization and new forms of collaboration can really facilitate the adoption of such new market infrastructures, I believe is a, uh, is a great opportunity for capital market union in Europe and also for the competitiveness of the European capital market. So thanks a lot to all of you for the insights and uh, yeah, thanks to the audience. Thank you.